side. I uh, survive on its own without sauce, but uh, put it on there. Nice uh, smoke ring. You see that pink on the side. This is the best of the best. So Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Major Scott here from The Major Reviews It. Who's ready for some barbecue? I know I love cooking and I love a good slab of barbecue ribs. And today I'm gonna show you how to make some ribs that are just gonna knock anybody's socks off. It's super easy. And if you follow what I tell you to do today, you will make some amazing barbecue. So let's get started. So for today's video, we're gonna be doing uh, pork spare ribs. We're not gonna be doing baby backs. And to be honest with you, I prefer the spare ribs. The spare ribs are a little bit more work, but if you do them right, uh, I don't think you'll uh, ever go back to baby backs. At least I don't. You can pick up sp pork spare ribs just about anywhere. Um, in your supermarkets that is. Sam's uh, is where I got these today. Sam's usually has a pretty good selection and they get a good two pack. So we got a big slab of ribs here. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to trim up the ribs and then remove the membrane off of the uh, back side of the ribs. Now, if you're looking for a set of, you know, if you're looking to choose the ribs, in my opinion, it's not that important. Uh, some people may disagree. It's not like a brisket per se. Um, a brisket, you really have to look at the cut of meat and there's a big difference between choice, select, and prime. And uh, anytime you do beef, you definitely want to look at the meat and choose accordingly. But pork, to be honest with you, as long as it's not overly fatty, uh, pork's gonna render and uh, get tender and as it's cooking. So really honestly, pork ribs are not that big of a deal. Just get as much as you want. Uh, if it's a, you know, they come in different sizes. So get the size you like and don't spend too much time looking at the, uh, the actual rib. That's just my advice. So let's get this thing opened up and trimmed up and uh, see what we got. So when you get ready to trim your ribs, a couple things you'll need. First of all, nice sharp knife because we're gonna be cutting that backbone off of the ribs. So take the knife, sharpen it up. I got this one uh, nice and sharp and a set of kitchen shears. It's easy to uh, get the ribs separated and uh, cleaned off. Now I take the ribs out myself. I, I rinse them off just uh, get all the stuff off before I trim them up. Uh, they get kind of slimy and uh, so I take the cold water here and just kind of wipe them off. Make sure your hands are clean, obviously. Um, but you see this one, it's pretty good. I usually trim this piece of meat off the back too and then I'll throw it on and use it in some baked beans or something, I'll chop it up. I cook it, I don't waste it, but um, I usually trim that off so I have a nice uh, a nice slab of ribs. I'm into pr presentation, so I like everything to look nice. I like that St. Louis style cut and um, to make them really nice. So let's go ahead and rinse them off. Again, nothing real fancy here. Just get them rinsed off. And also you wanna make sure that your prep area is clean. I usually wash the, um, wash the sink down with some, with some soap beforehand. Just make sure everything's clean because you are dealing with pork. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming up the back. Now, as I said earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of these areas off to kind of flatten them out. And like I said, you don't have to put too much thought in this, just kind of trim them away, just so you get more of a, more of a universal type of, um, you know, cut here. So trim that. And also you can trim off any excess fat uh, that you uh, see. And right here, like this piece here, I'm gonna trim that off a little bit. Fat isn't necessarily a bad thing with barbecue, but too much, you know. So I got that one done. I'm gonna do the same with this one. Just kinda slicing this up. And again, this you can leave that on there. You can leave that meat on there. It'll just, add some more meat to the back. Like I said, I usually go ahead and cook this and I'll throw it in a, a pot of baked beans or something like that, or make jalapeno poppers with pork. So we got this all done. Again, I'm gonna rinse it with cold water. 
All right, so I got all this taken care of. Now, you can choose to do this next step or you can forego it. Uh, what I like to do is there is a little bit of membrane on the back side of this rib. Some butchers will remove it. Uh, most do not. And all it is is a, a piece of skin. And again, there's a great debate on whether you even need to do this or not. Uh, but I like to do it. So what you do is you need to get up underneath this skin somehow. And if you can find an end, what I like to do is take a paper towel and I find the end and I'll make sure you can see what I'm doing here. I usually try to find the end somewhere and start peeling this membrane. And again, it's really easy, a little pro tip here, if you peel it with a paper towel, it'll be that much easier. I have seen these little skinning pliers, and if you've ever skinned a catfish, it's something real similar. But again, you just want to kind of pull this, this membrane off and there's nothing you want to do with this. So make sure once it's, once it's off, you uh, discard it. But again, if you don't do this, it's not the end of the world. You can leave it on there. It's just, I do a wet marinade, which I'll show you here in a minute. And I like to make sure that all, um, that marinade can penetrate to the bottom. Now and the next step, is we're going to get these ribs to look like they do in the store with a St. Louis cut. And the way they do that is they trim it up into a rectangular type of slab. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, I'm gonna move this first of all, I'm gonna try to move that, maybe give you a little bit better view, view of the, uh, of the rib itself. But what you want to do is you want to, this is where it's important to have a really sharp knife. You want to just cut along this backbone into a nice rectangular shape and you want to go all the way down. Now you may have to cut through some gristle and some bone, but that's okay. We're going to make a really pretty St. Louis cut of rib. Now there's two things you can do with this piece of meat here. This is a lot of meat and you can throw this on the grill with the ribs. You can season it. Or my wife, what she does is a lot of times she will cut this up into chunks and freeze it and she'll put it into different soups or something requiring pork. You can make uh, red beans and rice or what have you, but um, it's a good piece of meat. I'm gonna cook it today and I'll show you. But as you can see right here, this is a good looking slab right here. That is a St. Louis cut. It'll give you that nice um, uniform rib uh, look to it. And it just looks pretty when it's done. The ends here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. And again, this is just pure meat. I'm gonna put that on but that's pretty good right there. All right, I got a, the other ribs in a little tub here. We're gonna use the marinade for that one. This is a really cool little tub. My daughter bought this for me for Christmas one year, but it collapses and it can also be a cutting board, but it's great for marinating. It's kind of a rubber and uh, it's really good for what we're doing here. So we're gonna do the same thing with this one. We're gonna go ahead and just trim it up and make it pretty. So we are done with this portion of the prep. Now I do what's called a wet marinade. My marinade is really simple. It's just a little bit of Worcestershire and some Dales and some lemon. I use lemon for pork. I use lime anytime I'm doing beef. Uh, again, my preference, the lemon actually accents the pork really well and typically lemon for chicken, lemon for pork, and I use, like I said, I use lime for beef. I don't marinate them overnight. You can if you want. I usually marinate them a couple hours and that's the most. And then what I do is I'm gonna slather it down. Once they're done marinating, I'll pat them dry and then I slather them with mustard, uh, French, French's yellow mustard or Heinz yellow mustard. 
Now, don't panic if you don't like mustard because you're not going to taste it anyway. What the mustard does, again, it uses the vinegar in the mustard to complement the pork and also helps break it down a little bit. It also is used, and the most important thing it's used for, is it's a binder. It will hold the seasoning to, um, to the ribs so it won't fall off and it just makes it look really good. It'll give you that good bark, that good, um, that good seasoning to the, the texture of the rib. Again, don't panic if you don't like mustard because a lot of people don't. I'm not a huge mustard fan myself, but I never cook ribs without it. My wife, I didn't even show her the first couple times I cooked it because I knew she would throw a fit. But then the next time, a couple times later, she saw me use it, she asked me why, and I told her she'd been eating mustard on it for a long time. So again, don't skip this step. Just try it, and again, if you cook it, don't like it, then do something different, but I don't think you're gonna have a problem. So okay, gonna... as I said earlier, nothing really cosmic or special about this marinade. It's just something that I do if I have time, throw a little bit of Dale's and Worcestershire and lemon and maybe a little bit of the seasoning that I'm gonna be using. And then I'll let it sit up for about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, if you wanna go longer, that's fine. If uh, an hour or two is usually good. And if you wanna set it up overnight, um, that's fine. Now, word of caution, if you do use Dale's, this is Dale's seasoning. It's really good, it's really salty. So if you uh, have heart issues, high blood pressure issues, have to avoid the salt, uh, don't use Dale's. Now, we're not gonna leave it in there very long, so I usually, I don't have to worry about um, the Dale's soaking in and making it really salty, but Dale's is really, really salty. So let me go ahead and put some in and we'll show you how to set this up. And what I do is I set the, I set the ribs, fat, um, meat side down, bone side up, and then you see the back uh, bone right there. That way, most of the marinade is going to soak to the bottom, and it'll get in that meat and uh, create a good flavor. So these lemons are pretty small, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get them ready. I usually roll them. If, that, if you don't do that, it's a good technique. If you're going to squeeze a lemon or whatever, um, or a lime, it's best if you, if you roll them. So go ahead and cut them. Boy, this knife is sharp. So I cut them like that and then just kind of, again, squeeze it. If you get the seeds in there, that's okay. Not a big deal. Squeeze the lemon there and then another one. I might use one and a half. They're not real big lemons, but um, anyway, I'll probably use one and a half. I don't want it too lemony, but again, this is one of those things that adds without overpowering. If you're not a big lemon fan, again, it's like the mustard. It's just one of those, it's just one of those things that if you add it, it's really good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kinda roll this around, let it mix, take a turkey baster, put it in the, uh, put it in the refrigerator for about, let's see, maybe an hour and a half or two hours, and then uh, I'll baste it a couple times. I'm gonna go get the grill ready, and then uh, we'll put the seasoning on and put it on the grill. Okay, so I got the ribs in the fridge. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like. Um, the fridge itself, I got them on the top, they're in there. I've kind of rolled them around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this lid that came with this on here. And I'm just gonna let them sit like that. You could cover them with foil if you need to, but uh, I'll sit them in the, in the fridge for about two hours or so. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and prepare the grill. Um, if you don't wanna let them sit in there for more than an hour or two, that's fine. Um, I think about two hours for me is, typically what I do, and it works well. If you want to do it overnight, I wouldn't use as much Dales. I'd go light on the Dales because, again, the longer you soak that stuff in Dales, the more saltier it's going to be. So um, just use discretion. All right, y'all, the Komodo Kamado is coming up the temp nice and easy. Uh, we have it set up for indirect cooking, which is very important with something like uh, ribs or brisket or even a uh, Boston butt. You can accomplish this a lot of different ways. You can use a drip pan like I did. The drip pan, you can see right here, it serves two purposes. I fill it with water and you can fill it with anything really, um, but it adds that moisture to any of the meat. 
So it helps out, helps it prevent from drying out. All right, for the rub, we're going to keep it real simple, guys. I use an off-the-shelf uh, type rub. I can make my own rub. I have in the past, but to be honest, it's more expensive, less consistent, so I try to keep things simple. I use the Weber KC Barbecue Rub, as you can see there, and also the Grill Mates Applewood. Those two rubs are kind of a staple in my house. My kids and my wife really love it, so... What we're going to do, we're going to rub this slab of uh, of spare ribs down with this mustard. And that's going to take that vinegar and add that nice little complement to the pork. And it's also going to, like we talked about earlier, provide that binder. Real simple, guys. Um, and if you have a latex glove, this is what I normally like to do, but unfortunately I don't have any. So just rub it over there very liberally. And then you'll see me uh, spread it on to the, uh, to the rib. Okay, so our target temp for this cook is going to be about 225 and 250, somewhere in between those. Uh, we are a little bit higher, but that's intentional. And why we do that is you're going to be putting cold um, barbecue pork into the grill. So it's going to lower the temp when you put all of that meat in there initially. So what you can do is you can take it up to about 260, 270 and put that barbecue in um, and it won't reduce the temperature uh, quite as bad you're also got the lid open so you're going to lose a lot of heat so we're just going to put the ribs um, if you can stand them up if you have a barbecue rack that's best if you don't have a barbecue rack if you can stand them up somehow it's better to cook them on their sides like that now on the top here I will put some uh, more rub on that side and cover anything that hasn't been covered. Um, we got the other slab here. These are really looking good and uh, I know they're gonna turn out incredible. But again, everything is uh, in spirit of keeping simple. Just lay them down. And um, again, that, uh, that little backbone, uh, we're gonna cook that just like a rib. And you'll see here toward the end of the cook, uh, that is going to be just as good as the regular ribs themselves. So all this meat is going to go ahead and uh, get cooked and just kind of put it where you can. And we should be uh, pretty good. Again, nothing cosmic. We're not operating on brains and we're not building rockets. We keep it as simple as we can. Looking good though. All right, so the Komodo Komodo is starting to climb in temp, so I'm going to back off the top daisy wheel and also crack that back to uh, probably about a quarter turn, and then I usually use that, and that should keep it around two, 225 or so. I usually close this and then open it up about a half turn. So we'll, uh, we'll see the temp come down. Like I said earlier... I am going to coat the top of the ribs. I want to make sure I have the right one for each of these. I don't want to put that uh, apple wood on top of the, the KC one because they are a different flavor. The only downside of doing this way is that steam 
coming off of the um, smoke it can uh, it can clog up your barbecue so these are looking really good I'm gonna get that back rib rack here like I said don't be afraid to to go all out but anyway we're gonna go ahead and close this down and lock her up and we'll wait Okay, so I bumped up the temp a little bit to about 260 or so. Um, trying to finish these ribs off. Um, let me turn the light on and show you what we got going on. Um, as you can see, the bone is starting to protrude, which is a good sign. Uh, they're looking really, really good. They're a little dry looking right now, but that's not um, uncommon and that's what we want because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna finish these ribs in what's called a Texas crutch. I'm gonna wrap them in aluminum foil. They've already got all the uh, smoke and all the seasoning and, and um, the rub and everything's amalgamated in, so they're really good right now. What the Texas crutch, uh, the aluminum foil trick does is it tenderizes them a little bit. Pork ribs, um, pork spare ribs, you know, it takes a little bit of prep as you saw earlier. But um, we're going to get these things tender, and they will be as tender as baby backs. It just, again, you got to finish them off in the Texas Crutch. I'm not going to put any sauce on right now because I'm going to put the sauce off to the side. Good barbecue always stands on its own. So it's a good time to uh, promote the channel. Again, if you're new here, thank you so much for... Um, joining in this isn't a niche channel it's going to be anything that i think interesting um i'm going to bring it to you and bring you my opinion so if you haven't done so do me a favor hit that like hit that subscribe and it'll keep this channel going so we're going to get these ribs cut up and i'll be right back okay so it's pretty simple what you do i just pulled one of these ribs uh, out of the uh the grill and um on the edge the uh, bone is starting to pull away from the meat. So that's a good indication that it's pretty close to being done. And you could eat it right now, I mean, but it, it's a little more, um, probably a little more firm than you really want. So what we're gonna do is do the Texas Crutch and we're just gonna wrap it like this. Sometimes people will put apple juice in there and that's a nice little touch and you can do that. I'm not gonna do that right now, but um, apple and pork, mates really really well and it's a really good combination so if you want to pour a little apple juice in there it'll caramel it'll caramelize uh, really good but real simple we're just going to wrap it up and try to tighten it up a little bit it's kind of hard to do with one hand but i'm going to make sure these seams are pressed down pretty good and i'm just going to put it back in the grill for about 20 more minutes okay so i pulled the ribs off the grill and earlier what i was saying is if you pick them up you can see how they bend really, really easy. So these are gonna be really, really tender. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take them out of the aluminum foil, and then I'm gonna set them down, drain them, because they're really juicy. Uh, I'll show you a little bit here. You can see right there, the steam coming off. It's <laughs> it, got the, uh, it got the actual uh, lens, but I don't know if you can see the, the juice in there, but these things looked a little dry before, but um, they are absolutely incredibly tender right now and very, very juicy. Sometimes I'll put them in a cooler and let them sit for about 30, 40 minutes. And um, if you're doing a party or a picnic or something like that, uh, the cooler is your friend. So let's get these things cut up right now because we're ready to eat. Now I can make these things and I could show you how to make these things just mush and a lot of people think that that's the sign of good barbecue actually if a rib is too tender it's overcooked you you really want the rib to kind of pull away from the bone with a little bit of a tug so if it just falls off the bone when you pick it up it's actually overcooked now if you like it that way you know you do you um these are, they cook probably a little longer. You see how much the meat is pulled back. But really, honestly, you just slice into there and then uh, cut into that one there. 
and you should have a nice easy cut and boy these are really tender but I'm gonna tell you something right now this right here that's good barbecue y'all you see that nice little smoke ring around and uh, just wow that I'm gonna tell you something it doesn't get any better than this I put some um, sauce on the side so if you want to dab a little sauce but my ribs don't need any sauce i'm just going to tell you that right now and that's the sign of a true uh barbecue champion right there all right so this is definitely southern barbecue at its finest um look at the juice you see on the side again this can uh survive on its own without sauce but if you want sauce go ahead and uh, put it on there nice uh, smoke ring you see that pink on the side this is the best of the best so all right there's that backbone cut up and just look at that meat right there that is just really good these are as good as the ribs themselves to be honest look at that little smoke ring right there pretty much all meat other than that cartilage and you can almost eat that cartilage so Really, really good turnout. Again, very easy. Just follow my steps and you can do this too. All right, the ribs are done. They're cut up and they're in a, uh, a little uh, tray, serving tray. And we're getting ready to uh, put them on the plate. So, so good, so yummy. But this is what it should look like when you're done.